back. Well done. Well done, guys. Oh, I see the numbers have increased. Someone interesting must be coming into the building. <laughs> I... Oh, well, you know, I don't think we should give it much more pause, Jason. Should we just bring her out here? Do it. She's normally with her friends. Today she's on her own. Ladies and gentlemen, give her all the support you can. Miss Brianna Bumpmaster! <laughs> Never been to a convention before. Oh, there's a good few. So I just want you guys to know that she can sing. Yeah. She does a bit. She has an album. We're doing yeah. a bit, and it gets. It's like the more. Also, it's very challenging to make Jason Mans laugh out loud. That's just like not a thing he usually does. And so it's really fun for me to watch him LOL. But so he was once said to me, he's like, the more serious you do it, the funnier it is. And so. When I sing and I'm just like, bad girls, bad girls, and then I start to make myself laugh, and then I can't get through it. And you get into it, and sometimes you do the finger, <laughs> and like you'll hold your ear like a Mariah Carey thing. And there's always at least 20 people in the crowd that are like, what no, we're is she doing? <laughs> They they're don't supportive. Know. I know. They're but, like, uh, they think I'm terrible. Yeah. Yes. It makes them so uncomfortable. It's a good fit, yeah. Are you singing tomorrow night? I am. Woo! Uh, are you singing that song like that? Yeah, that song. Out. Like that. That's yeah. great. <laughs> well, thanks. Yes. Well, without further ado, Rihanna Bookmaster. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you going to be all right here, girl? I'll be fine. Okay, you sure? Well, God knows what's going to happen to these guys. <laughs> is small but mighty. Oh my god. Is this the rowdiest from the PJ parties to the photo ops to the meet and greets? You fuckers are rowdy. I like it. I like it. Uh, one of my friends um, brought me some oxygen. Um, those those hucking tanks. So I've been um, partaking in that. I used to partake in copious amounts of tequila, but now I'm old. <laughs> now I'm old and tired, so I just, I just huff oxygen. <laughs> so that's fun for me. That's fun for you guys. But I think that this, there's something about the lack of oxygen that makes you rowdier. Do we think that's true? Yeah. <laughs> What's the thing with oxygen? It's that if you get a lot of it, it makes you sleepy, right? And nobody wants to answer that one, okay? Because that's a bit sciencey. That's harder. I'm not answering it. Um, I, on airplanes, when you have too much oxygen, you you fall asleep, right? Again, no answers. Okay, great. Let's take a question. Hello. I want to apologize ahead of time. As I met my friend Ari yesterday. Hi, my love. Ari learned a lot of new vocabulary yesterday. <laughs> and she learned things about the female body. Um, through discussion, through discussion, this is a PJ party. So I would like to offer that um, apology ahead of time to you as well. Okay. What's your name? Kellen. Kellen, pleasure to meet you, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. What is the strangest question you've ever been asked at a convention? Um, strangest question. Well, here's something that I'd like to say ahead of time. I don't believe that there are strange questions because I think there's unusual questions, which just means there's questions that I don't often get, which I really enjoy. There's hard questions, which I usually complain about all the time because I, Helen, am inherently lazy. And when people ask me hard questions, I yell at them and say mean words to them, but I would never do that to you. I would just do it to everybody else. Um, but I also 
love questions like, what, what is your favorite color? I love questions like that. Um, because again, like I said, I'm lazy. So I don't think that there's been anything that's been too crazy, but I remember back in the day when I first started doing conventions, someone asked me if I was to be a kitchen utensil, <laughs> what kitchen utensil would I be? Remember those days? <laughs> Nobody asks those fucking questions anymore. Um, now, my answer I think at that time was I would be a colander, like a spaghetti strainer because I love spaghetti. That seemed like a, a good answer. Um, but that was probably the weirdest question that I got. And I'm so happy I never got it again. But this was a perfect question, so thank you so much. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Um, I didn't date that much. Um, I also didn't sleep around that much. I am one of those people that gets cuter and more confident as I get older. Um, and we all do, we just need to recognize that about ourselves, I believe. And so I did not feel confident or cute when I was younger, and so I didn't actually date very much. But this is gonna show my age, and that's fine, I don't mind doing that. Um, when I was single for a hot second before I met my husband, uh, I went on a website. Yes, those were the things before apps. Um, <laughs> called Plenty of Fish. Oh. Yeah, no, let's not, we don't need to cheer for that. <laughs> no. So Plenty of Fish was free, and it showed. <laughs> it fucking showed. Because there'd be a lot of people that I'd never met with, never chatted with, never anything with. Had, didn't even have f photos as their avatars. They just had like, you know, the weird outline of the human and they just go, what you wearing? <laughs> so I told them. I'm like, some, a fucking t-shirt with holes in it. A couple stains on it. Well, it sounds hot. I'm like, no it doesn't. Uh, but I went on a couple of dates through Plenty of Fish and they were not good matches. But again, I had not dated, so I didn't really know what that was like. I think I went on my first date when I was in college, when I was in theater school. And I think I dated maybe one or two people after that. So I'm not well versed in the dating, which is why I think I'm so confident. <laughs> um, so I don't know that I've had a terrible, terrible, terrible date. And I feel so lucky to have a partner. I'm in a partnership that is very expensive, meaning we allow our partnership, our partnership to shift and change over time. We are married, but we don't necessarily believe in the construct of marriage, but we are married and we have a beautiful partnership. We've been together for 15 years and I'm so grateful for that partnership. I'm even more grateful when I see things like um, TikTok and I hear people talk about what it's like to date right now. Um, have you had a really bad date? Uh, I'm sure I have, I'm blanking now, but I, I did get dumped once because he needed to shoot more zombies. <laughs> is he is he in a hospital somewhere now? <laughs> okay. I think you're I think you're better off. Let's just say that right off the bat. Um, yeah, I think it would be very challenging to date right now. But I'm I'm still gonna keep trying. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great question. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? This is my friend who I mentioned learned some new words last night. Yes, hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead, baby. Go ahead. If you had to choose to be a different character in Supernatural, which one would it be? That's a great question. Um, I would love to be... Um, Dean or Sam, because I think that they make the most money <laughs> on the show. They get the most play. Um, it's also very interesting to imagine what other actors bring to different characters. This is why it's such a great question. I, if I was to play Rowena, it would be a very different character, as if Ruth was to play Donna. Um, Donna is just a Scottish accent, but it's fucking great. Um, but it would be fun because Donna 
is what we call low stakes character, meaning because she's a woman and because she's not a monster, she's not one to be feared, even though we all know she's being scary and amazing, right? But within the canon of the show, would it be correct to say she's not one to be feared, such as some of the other characters? It would be fun to be a character to play like um, Lucifer, you know, or Crowley. I would enjoy playing any of those characters, ones that are high stakes, that really, whatever those characters do concerns everybody else on the show. That would be fun to do. Power, I just want power <laughs> and money. Okay, so run with that, baby. Thank you so much, your dream. God bless that child. <laughs> and your mom. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm okay. I have to fart, but I'm not going to. Because <laughs> I love you. And as you've talked, there's a thing about oxygen in Denver. So I'm not going to do that to you. And I know that these tickets are expensive. And Kim's already not here, so I don't want to make you matter. Um, how are you? Good. Uh, my question is, who is your favorite cast member to work with? Kim Rose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kim Rose. Um, second place would be Jensen Ackles. Very close third, only because I didn't work with him that much, would be Richard Spade Jr. <laughs> There's my buddies. You know, Al Cal and I had a, had a pretty good time, even though we didn't know each other that well when we shot the episode we did, and we only had like one teeny tiny scene. Um, Kim Rhodes and I, we have told this story many times. So when Kim and I met to do, okay, let me rewind. So when I did my first episode, which was episode, yeah, you're a terrible <laughs> <laughs> you don't know the, the, what was it called? The purge. The purge. See, these are actual things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God for you guys. Okay, let me just pull my pants down out of my. Okay. Um, I did the purge. So when I shot the purge. I had not been doing film and television for very long. I've, talk, I've told this story many times, so bear, bear with me for those who haven't heard it. Um, my background is in theater and comedy, and I started doing film and television because I was pregnant, um, and I just needed some work. I just need the baby. Um, and you can't work on stage when you're pregnant. So I started doing commercials, voiceover, film, television, and it's great, and I'm so grateful for a gazillion reasons that I did this. But when the breakdown came for this audition, now the funny thing is that I had auditioned for Supernatural two weeks earlier to play nurse number two. <laughs> and as you know, if you are on a TV show as one character, you can't be on it again. And so when, that's, I know, shut up, shut up. Let me fuck that. my Um, yeah, so I auditioned for nurse number two, and I didn't get it, and I was destroyed. I was so, so sad that I didn't get this part. And then, I, they came back with this other role, Sheriff Donna. The breakdown said they want her to be just like Mar Margie, Margie in Fargo, <laughs> except not pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> So, I just didn't tell them. Which is, I would not recommend, liability-wise. But I just needed the job. And so I really didn't think about it much in, in any other way than that. I just needed the job. Um, so when I was shooting it, it was a super, very, very fun role to play. I got to meet Jared Jensen. I didn't know who these fuckers were. You're a very handsome. <laughs> Jensen and I had a good time. The first thing I shot was the donut scene. <laughs> and he quickly learns that I'm funnier than him. <laughs> so he, he keeps trying. He 
keep starting. Um, and so that was really fun to shoot. And then I remember I was shooting the scene where I was lying down on my stomach, which was brutal because I was pregnant, but I told them at this point. But I was in that um, massage chair where my face is sticking through, and I had to lie there because they're building all of these VFX shots on my back. Um, and Phil Sabrici, who's the director, he beeps around this, this massage chair like this, and he goes, you know what? There's another sheriff on the show named Sheriff Jody Mills. And I think it would be really funny if you guys met at like, like, a, like a sheriff's convention or something. <laughs> and then Brad Creaser, who's the camera AOP, said, that sounds like a spin-off. <laughs> and this was nine years ago. It was so long ago. Anyway, I'm a person who's never worked in film television, and I was just like, what? This is how easy it is to get your own show? <laughs> well, anyway, cut to, you know, the, the next season. They invite me to come back. I know that I'm going to be meeting Kim Rose. I was very excited. I know she'd been on the show for a while. I know she'd been on lots of shows. Um, and I was so, so, so excited to meet her. And she was less excited to meet her. <laughs> I can tell the story because we tell it a million times and things are obviously different now. But she had been told that I was like really funny and that, you know, how the thing that happens sometimes with women when you're like, oh, you're gonna love her, she's a girl. And you're like, sure, 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 okay. But I roll up, so she's in, so we're talking about hippie 911 now, right? Mm -hmm. So she, it's the scene where she comes up to take a phone call, she steps outside, she's on the steps of the lodge, take a phone call from Alex. Now, Transpo is driving me from, from Circus, from my trailer, to set, to go into a scene with Kim. I, being new to film television, not understanding how things work, I see Kim walk out of a building. <laughs> and so I roll down the window of the transport vehicle, and I go, decided she loved me after that. <laughs> and then we would go 3 o'clock every day, we'd go for coffee and cookies, we'd go for coffee and cookies, we'd go 3 o'clock every single day. She, we had lunch once in her trailer, she told me all about these conventions, and she had told me, she said, you're going to replace me at these conventions, and it's fine, it's going to be fine, but they only usually have one girl per convention. And I said, well that's fucking dumb. I said, well, maybe they'll have both of us on stage at the same time. She's like, never gonna happen. Never gonna happen. Look at us now. <laughs> that's thanks to creation, that's thanks to you guys, that's thanks to Kimberly Rose. So, by far, when Kim is in town shooting, same with Kung Fu. She's shooting Kung Fu in Vancouver right now. We hang out all the time. Like, Kim is, a, is genuinely one of my best friends in the entire world. She's the best person ever. I love her so much. So that is the long answer to um, Kim. Thanks. So <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, first up, I just wanted to thank you and Kim for our Wayward podcast. Um, it's amazing and like way too many ways to count. Oh, thank um, you. I've listened to it as soon as it comes out. Um, so my question is regarding the podcast. What's the favorite topic that you guys have done, and like why? Mm -hmm. It varies. We just recorded one, and I can't fucking remember what the topic is. Because the topics are kind of, end up being round. We go, let's riff on this topic, and then we just have a conversation about it. Um, but the last one we did, which I have not, it's not come out yet. It will be the next one to come out. We laughed a lot, and I have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> so, it's going to be funny. That's all I remember. But... The most recent episode we did, I'm only talking about the recent ones because as you mentioned before, I'm old and I can't remember things, so. Um, the recent episode we did with uh, Richard Spade was very good. If you haven't heard it yet, it's important that you hear it. Because it's a, also, it's important to have conversations with men in a space where they don't usually get an opportunity to share things. And I say that in a very gendered way, 
because of most spaces in the world are very masculine. We live in a very masculine world, and that's we're working on that. Um, to have a little give and take, that's all. Um, and Roger Spade is a very masculine man, but he also shares things so beautifully, specifically this was about his love of his children and what he's learned through raising them. And he just had such a beautiful share. He also mentioned afterwards, he's like, I've never been on a podcast that was just sort of conversation as opposed to a um, interview. Um, and that's what our podcast is, always just conversations. So that brings up, I, that was a very special moment, because we also don't usually have guests on the podcast. Kim and I are too lazy. <laughs> um, and we just like to yammer on with each other. So that was a pretty good one. Um, we also used to record in Kim's closet, and sometimes we just do episodes where we just go through her closet. <laughs> we did one episode where we just went through our purses. That was also very fun. It's, you know, we, oh, there's one episode where we recorded our drive from, we brought the computer and the microphone into the car driving from Vegas Con back to LA. That one was not for ice cream, all that, everything. It's very fun, it's very fun. Oh, so there's too many, but those are the ones that come to mind. Thank you, thanks for listening. Hi, um, my question is, who is your favorite Spice Girl? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be judged no matter what I say. <laughs> um, when I was younger, my favorite was Scary Spice. Yeah. She's the redhead. No, it's Ginger. <laughs> ginger. That's Ginger Spice? Yes. Well, that's a little on the nose, isn't it? Scary Spice is Mel. Yes. Mel C. Yeah. Yes. B. Mel B. Yes. Mel C is the sporty one. Yeah. As I mentioned, it's been a while. <laughs> um, when I was, I think that um, Scary Spice is my favorite now, and I think that Ginger Spice was my favorite when I was younger. And you know why? I think it's Ginger Spice was very. Um, or at least came across as very irreverent and a bit loud and like a bit fuck you a little bit. And when I was young, I was I had no confidence and I really envied that about her. Um, so that would be it. Are they touring again? Not that I know of. You don't know shit. Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> the worst. I heard they were touring or maybe they were going to and then shit went awry. Anyway. Big fan of Spice Girls. I was listening to them this morning. They're on my um, my workout playlist. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> That's a great question. I love questions like that. See? See, Kelly? Hello. Hi, Brianna. Um, what's your favorite music genre? My favorite music genre. Um, I don't know that I have one anymore. I'm very into like moods. I love it when Spotify makes the playlist for me. But I have a degree in musical theater. And so I grew up on musical theater. I was the kid that was like, I was a total Rent head. I was listening to Rent all day long. Yeah, yeah fucking Rent! <laughs> um, and anything, any musical, really. I love, love, love Broadway musicals. I still listen to them. Um, but now I'm like, listening to lyrics of songs more, so a genre I don't know that I listen to, like I listen to jazz if I'm making dinner, you know, I listen to like, you know, um, I can't even think, Maggie, what? Maggie Rogers, yes. Oh. You win. <laughs> Best person of the day. Uh, Maggie Rogers, uh, big fan of Maggie Rogers, like in the morning, her new album is great. Thank you, Roger. Big fan. But it's kind of where, wherever, wherever I'm feeling. Does anybody else do that? They're just like, what am I into right now? What mood do I want to be in? I feel like that's where we're going towards music, right? We all just want to kind of set whatever it's, we want to feel in the moment. We want music that's going to enhance that, right? And I feel like playlists do that. When we were growing up, it was just an album. We put a CD in the CD player or a cassette tape player. <laughs> 
Um, and then you just listen to whatever was coming at you. Now it's just like you can just, yeah, you just put in a mood. You can do that now and just go, I want, I, I want to, I want to feel break up me. And they're like, I got you. Just all Sam Smith. Um, but yeah, I think there's genres I like to sing. I definitely like to sing more blues music. But um, yeah, I think that genre-wise, it's all over the place. Everything. What about you? Um, I'm metal. Kind of. See? Yeah. Woo! I love Elvis recently. Oh yeah, did you see the movie? Yes, that's why I love Elvis. Um, <laughs> you loved him after you saw that movie? Yeah, and also my mom was like a huge fan of him before the movie, mm -hmm. so like I just like get closer with her, I guess. Aw, oh, I love that, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not really into like the trendy music and stuff. I can get into it, but I mostly am into it because I'm hit over the head with it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, fine, I'll like it. Then I get sick of it too fast. That's the bummer of it. But yeah, it's good. To, I think it's good to have, like with food, it's good to have a good taste for everything. Speaking of trendy music, I heard somebody on TikTok doing a metal version of that new Sam Smith song. And it was so cool. Yeah, so go find that. You're welcome. Bye. Hello. I know you said you don't normally have guests on your podcast, but if you could have any guests, who would it be and why? Any in the world? That's too hard. Bye. That's really hard. <laughs> Come on. Um, no, Kim would go, well, what am I doing during the day? Have I eaten breakfast yet? Am I grumpy? Do I need to be coddled? Do I need to coddle them? What color is their hair? Where am I at in life? Have I fed my daughter? That's a Kim response. Um, he's a Gemini. Um, I would love to have, I think as, I think, I don't know who I would want specifically, because that is a hard thing to say right now. But I would love to, I love having people on that change my, not change my opinion of them, but expand my understanding of something. I was talking in the meet and greet today about how we had recently recorded an episode of a podcast where I spoke about something, about my beliefs about something, and, and then went home that night and I went, I actually don't think those are my beliefs anymore. I thought about it, I read a little bit about it, and then I was like, I think I'm wrong. And then I talked to Kim and I was like, I think we need to edit out the things that are no longer my beliefs. She's like, gotcha, no problem, let's do it. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just delete the episode. And so we deleted it. And I think that Kim and I were both so proud of ourselves. We're like, we did the Mercury Retrograde Review, <laughs> which is what we're all supposed to do, which is go, hold on, is this aligned with what I believe and what I want to send out to the world? And I went, it's not. It's not anymore. And it's really important that I think we all go, I don't think I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> we all want to be right. It's a good feeling to be right. It's a really good feeling to point out to other people that they're wrong. <laughs> However, that doesn't create wonderful, graceful discourse in this world. So I love, I say this all the time, I love a note. I love when people go, you know, Brianna, you did this thing, it wasn't my favorite. I go, huh. And then I decide if that's their stuff or my stuff. And most often it's both of our steps, but I go, okay, I hear you. Here's where I can adjust. It makes me feel like I'm getting bigger, like I'm expanding, like I'm more invincible. Like that thing that I was scared of being hurt of, which is what most people are defensive about, is they don't want to get hurt. I just don't get hurt about it. So, point being, I don't know, I don't have an answer for you. But I love having anybody in the podcast that expands my view of the world. Okay? Is that a good answer? Oh, go on. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I, well, not really a question, but I wanted to know of the story behind your unicorn tattoo. If you're... Oh, oh yes, yeah, not a long story, but um, 
Have you ever um, drank alcohol before? <laughs> it makes you do brand new things. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I was in Italy uh, for a convention there, and um, I had told my daughter, I love getting uh, tattoos when I'm traveling. I have a few tattoos that I've just gotten on my travels. I'll research the tattoo artists and I'll book and then I'll just decide what I get. My, all of my tattoos are very random. None of them are very well thought out. So people go, what does this mean? I go, uh. Um, but I asked my daughter, I said, if I was to get a tattoo, what should I get? And she said, a unicorn. So I did. But the fun thing about this tattoo is that I was at a convention um, and the organizer is very connected in Rome. And so I said, hey, do you know of a tattoo artist or a tattoo parlor that would be good? Or do you know of people that would know? She's like, let me look into it. And she met, like an hour later, she came back. She said, a tattoo artist will come to your hotel room tomorrow morning. <laughs> I know! So the tattoo artist came to my hotel room and gave me a tattoo, gave Adam Fergus a tattoo. I think it was just the two of us. Everybody else, I don't know if people in this cast are fucking pussies. Um, so we were the only ones that got a tattoo. A lot of people were like, yeah, I'm gonna get a tattoo. I'm gonna get and then the, the, the artist got there and they're like, you know what? I think I'm just gonna, mm, I think I'm gonna think about that one. I'm gonna think about that one. I'm just like, okay, sure. Um, so that's the story about that. I thought it was very cool to just get a tattoo. It's like, a, it's like one manicure has come to your house. Um, yeah, but it was because of my daughter. She wanted a unicorn tattoo. But I love that. No hymen, huh? No, it's um, It's right there. No, I, I love it too. I have uh, my four year old niece is autistic, and her my sister's pregnancy story with her is very strange. She yeah. didn't find out she was pregnant until 27 weeks in. Oh my. And then she was born five weeks early. And she was born with a birth defect. So we call her our little unicorn. Yeah. So just when I see it, it resonates with me because she's, she's wonderful. Oh, I hope it does resonate with you. Because there are similar stories, just more alcohol involved in one of them. <laughs> this one was for my daughter. So for the same reasons, I think unicorns always will remind us of children or childhood. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, yes. Hello. Hello. Um, I wanted to know what your dream musical theater role would be, and it's cheating if you say Elphaba. Well, <laughs> fuck you, then. <laughs> fuck you. Sorry, Ari and Kellen. Um, Elphaba is not my dream. You know why? It's too hard. It's too hard. I saw the original cast of Wicked on Broadway. I stood in line for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and got one of the tickets that was available, because it was sold out to the tits. I got one of the tickets that was available. They just like released one ticket to a line of people. Um, I read somewhere that Adina Menzel, when she's doing Wicked, she, has, she cannot talk all day long and she has to, she cannot sleep in between shows because her voice will fall asleep. And she has to have steam showers before and after every show. I was like, I'm too poor to be in that show. I have to serve tables at the same time. Now, I've sung for most of my life, but my voice, because of the way I speak, I have a low speaking voice, I lose my voice very easily. And I've done it many times, I've done it, I did it really badly at the last Rockwood. I had to cancel my show at Rockwood because I just completely lost my voice. Um, so my voice is very fragile. So I did musical theater for years and discovered I would have no way of life if I was to continue in musical theater because I would have to not talk. Everything I did would be surrounding around keeping my voice healthy. Um, now, that being said, I, the last Musical, not the last musical, I saw Company just in the spring, the, the new one. I was in Company when I was a kid, which is hysterical because Company's about a bunch of grown ups. Um, but I recently saw Waitress, the musical. And I sang the big song from Waitress the musical, She Used to Be Mine, which is the most heartbreaking song. I saw uh, Shoshana Bean, who's a very famous actress sing it on Broadway, 
I saw the show on a whim, and I saw her sing it, and I was destroyed. If you have a chance, go listen to this song, She Used to Be Mine. It's about a woman who was pregnant and didn't want to be, and I had a very complicated relationship with myself being pregnant and my pregnancy. Not because I didn't want to have a baby, but because a woman having a baby changes her life. It changes how she's viewed by the world. It changes her body. It changes her body chemistry. And I wasn't sure how ready I was for that. And so that song just brought a flood of emotions about that. And then I actually sang that song at the Rockwood Music Festival in Germany, which is how I lost my voice. Because <laughs> I was weeping through the whole song. Um, anyway, I would love to play that role. That would be kind of a dream role. Final answer. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Brianna. So, I love traveling. Uh, one of my favorite uh, countries is Montenegro. I was wondering what is your favorite country or countries that you have or would like to travel to? Well, so, this is a great question. I, as I mentioned, grew up very poor. My, my, I grew up in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, on a chicken farm, and uh, we did not travel, ever. When we went on vacation, we went camping down the road. <laughs> we didn't travel. I don't think I was on an airplane until I was in college. And um, I started traveling. The very first place I ever took myself to was New York City, because I was obsessed with Broadway. And I, was, I grew up on a farm, but was always a city girl. And I just always wanted to be in the city. I wanted to be around the energy of the city. And you know, you see TV and movies in New York City, you're like, that's where I want to be. So the first time I could travel somewhere, I went there. And New York City is still the place I've visited the most in my entire life. It's one of my favorite places in the entire world. And will be forever. It's not a perfect city. I don't know that I want to live there anymore. But I, if I can go back once a year, I'm a happy camper. Um, but because of the conventions, I have traveled more than I ever have in my entire life. Now, traveling to the conventions is different because sometimes you fly in and fly out. You're at a convention center, a hotel, and an airport, and that's all you get to see. Maybe you get to see a Denny's or something. But um, I went to, the first time I went to Italy, because I went to Paris, and that was a dream as well. I took my husband, and we had just the best, best time. That was so fun. But when I went to Italy, it was the first time I'd been to a city that was an ancient city. You know, that was like ancient Rome. And you're seeing things that have been around for centuries. And I cannot comprehend, my brain cannot comprehend that unless you're looking upon it, right? Like the Colosseum. You're just like, oh my God, this has been here for almost literally ever. Um, and I think that, again, I love to live an expansive life. Anything that can kind of blow my mind like that, is kind of right. So for that reason, I would love to go to uh, Hong Kong. Um, Kim's favorite place in the world that she says I should go to is New Zealand. Um, and I think that if I could go anywhere where I could just learn more about the world, about worlds that I didn't grow up in, uh, that's, that would make me the happiest. The more adventure, the better. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, I'm Kayla. Hi, Kayla. Um, I was just, this kind of relates back to the Spice Girl question. Well, you know I answered that so well, so let's just do it again. Uh, in seeing her Backstreet Boys. Oh. Oh. Controversy. <laughs> I was, I mean, Backstreet Boys came out first. And I'm a little older than you. And so Backstreet Boys were my OGs. And you know what? Backstreet Boys took me out. I was like one of those kids that I was like, I do not like the Backstreet Boys. But then was secretly like open to them in my room. And then I came out as a positive Backstreet Boys fan. Um, and then NSYNC came a little after. Um, so I think I was Backstreet Boys. I don't think, I, I don't think I could, I, I don't think I could name you many NSYNC songs. I'm not, not a fan. I think Backstreet Boys, I was, I was, like, I would go to a Backstreet Boys concert. And I would like it. <laughs> was it? Yeah. Don't fucking rub it in. <laughs> you just hear me tell I just 
just loved it? Tell me more. Shut up, shut up. <laughs> Not by you. Hello. Hi. So, um, I was really thrilled that uh, when Donna came on the show, because I grew up in Minnesota. Ah! So, I'm um, hearing things like Miss Donna. And <laughs> I know it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a caricature yes. of, of people from that state. But there are Not people who actually speak like that. That's right. So, um, and UFTA itself is actually really, I, I grew up saying that all the time. So, it's, um, yeah. Um, but, um, my favorite line, actually, from the show that um, is one that Donna says, and um, it's when you're standing in front of the open trunk with all of the weapons, and somebody asks you, where did you get off of this? Um, and, and you just say, I'm Minnesota. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I forgot about that line. It's, it's the best, because a Minnesota has everything in their trunk. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? You're prepared, you're captain prepared yeah. for anything. I didn't know that! Oh, thank God for you! Sorry, sorry, best person of day. New best person of day. So, I, I, other than cons, have you ever actually been to Minnesota? I don't think so. Minneapolis? Yeah. Yes, I yeah. have. Yes, I have. Because there was a convention there, right? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I loved it. I've, I've not forgotten it. At all. I loved it so much. Thank you so much. That was great. What a great kid. No idea. I know stuff about Minnesota about the hot dish. That's a thing, right? Um, that's all I know. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> Two part question. Right. The first one being, do you want a PG-13 or rated R question? Oh. What a bunch of fucking perverts. <laughs> Ugh. Rated R. <laughs> Those questions. Hello. Hi. So you've mentioned a couple of times that you live an expansive life and that you're always looking for, I think, new ways of thinking. The word I'd like to offer you is epiphany, that you seek epiphanies. And my question for you is, when you are lost and looking for answers, is there a particular source that you turn to? No, not a particular one, but there is like a, like a very general one. So I, I realized not that long ago that the answers for everything are whatever you create them to be. We are, everything you experience are and um, will continue to encounter are constructs. And everything is like an opportunity for you to grow or an opportunity for you to shrink. Everything is an opportunity for you to learn or to, to stay as you are. And I chose and I continue to choose to grow, to be better, to be less scared. For me, that means I get to be less scared in this world. I get to be less fearful because the more I know, the more I know how to communicate with people who move through the world differently than I do, the, the easier it will be for everyone. Now, back to your question. When I need an answer for something, I just get very quiet and I go, what do I need the answer to be? And I just make it so, you know? And that's very easy and kind of pedantic to say, but it really can't be that, that easy. And if we're talking more like a faith-based situation, I'm not a religious person, but I do believe that if you want something to be a certain way, it can be that way. You can make it be that way. But if you're looking for answers for something, everything you need is within you. You just have to get quiet and listen. Yes. Oh, I got fucking nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. That made me sweaty. Hello. Um, I'm sorry. This is a hard question. I hate when people ask it to me. Why are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> you already know. I'm curious. 
I'm just kidding. Ask one. Ask one. I don't know my answer. Um, but which of your tattoos is your favorite? Oh, that's not that hard. Um, I think my unicorn tattoo is one of my favorites for sure. I think it was beautifully done. It's, I like where it's placed and I love the meaning behind it. Um, I recently got a little, very, very faint, a bumblebee on my hand. Um, which is kind of to represent um, bees, I think, are very important. I mean, to the climate and to the world, but also bees um, are um, tribal creatures, and they they know that they cannot get along by themselves. They know that they need other people around them. So I think it's a beautiful um, like signature for how I believe we should move through. I believe strongly in community. Um, and then I also have, um, hold on, you know you just like lose track? <laughs> I, have a, I have a large one on my thigh here. I will never get a big tattoo again, not because I don't love it, but because it took forever and it hurt. The rest of my tattoos didn't hurt at all. Um, um, I, have, I have a big, oh, like a sailor tattoo on my forearm that says mom. <laughs> I got that, I was pretty drunk. Um, we were in Australia. It was a back going. We are like, let's get tattoos. He bitched out. I didn't. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it for now. But I do get tattoos all the time. Oh, that's why they're little. Because I get them, they're very addictive. Yeah. Whenever I'm just like, I'm bored or I'm sad. I'm like, let's get a tattoo. That will fix everything. Thank you so much. Would you like to ask a question? I don't have a question. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Would you like to ask a question? Uh, if you could have any any plushie of any of any character from the show, what would it be? Of um, any plushie of any character from the show? Oh God. <laughs> Depends what I do to it. <laughs> Not wrong. I'm wrong. I know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so many things you can do to a stuffy or plushy as you call them. Yep. <laughs> I feel like I'm not going to answer that question now. I feel like I put myself in a situation where there could be no right answer or wrong answer. How about more than one answer? Okay. All right. All right. Settle down there for a while. She was at the PJ party yesterday. Real handful, this one. Um, well, what do we like to do with Steph? No, no. We have to move on. We have to move on. I have gone down the wrong path, and I apologize. It is not your fault. It is my fault. I take full responsibility, but we're too far now. We can't answer this question anymore. Okay? They're going to have to put a big warning on my panels from now on. I'm gonna teach poor Ari and Callan new things. They're gonna look at their stuffies a different way. They want that for them. Just thinking about the children, you know? That's what I do. But I want you to enjoy your stuffy. Stop it. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh God, love you. Hello. Hi. My question is, um, if you could have like a panel with anybody other than Kim, who would it be? I would love to have a panel with Jensen. Yes. We have talked about that many times. Yes. I feel like the, what, what I bring out of people is always a surprise because, as you may have noticed, I maybe talk about things that people don't talk about on a stage. <laughs> in front of people. Um, but yes, that would be really fun. It, I feel like maybe we did one once, but it would also be really fun to do one with Rich. Mm. Rich was fake. Yeah. Rich and I are good buddies. He's done the pajama party once, and he, man oh man, he and I laugh so hard. But sometimes I can't understand what he's saying <laughs> because of his accent and his mustache. <laughs> I'm saying it's very hard to understand what he's saying. And I'll just laugh and nod. And I don't like doing that because then he thinks he's funny and it's probably a dumb joke. So, um, yes, those two. And I guess you 
a PJ party with Mike Borja last night, and that was fun. Mike and I have such a great time. So, yes, those are my answers. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, it's kind of a strange question. Uh, I'll keep it mostly PG. Don't worry. Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. I'll change it. Don't worry. Don't worry. You know what's your favorite swear word? That's PG. A swear word that's PG? Oh, like, 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 and I remember Misha actually heard me say it once, he was like, wow, watch your mouth, butt master. I say, holy doodle, a lot, a lot. I don't know why, it's a very Donna thing to say, isn't it? Yeah. Holy doodle. Um, but it's not my favorite swear word. There's no, swear words are so important. So I swear a lot around my daughter. Um, she's eight, but she, <laughs> What? <laughs> no, that's so fucking funny. Us too, that's why we're laughing. Oh, you're laughing because you were late. We were late, yeah. Okay, sure, you can stay then. Um, yes, yeah, but she's never, I've never ever heard her swear, ever. Even if, like, she does, if I'm auditioning for something, she'll run lines with me, and she'll be like, um, Jimmy says that you need to go F-word yourself. <laughs> she knows it's a bad word. She knows, it's, you know, she doesn't obviously know all the things that that word means, but um, she'll, she knows what we tell her about swear words is that swear words have power. And there, it's important to utilize that power um, in appropriate ways. Because if you overuse it, they lose their power. Right? Um, I like to use it for emphasis or for comedy. I don't actually swear that much when I'm angry. Because I feel like if I swear too much when I'm angry, I'm not going to be heard. Um, I swear a lot when I'm trying to be funny. Um, or, su or surprise people, catch people off guard. Um, but we don't say, we don't tell her that they're bad words. We don't apply morality to words. Um, we say those are grown-up words, and when you understand the consequences of using them, then you can use them. And I think that she's just gone, I, that sounds confusing and hard, so I choose not to. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she says, oh my god, all the time, which I try to get her not to say. I don't know why, I don't like her saying it. It's not, I don't really have any problem with it, but... She, her and her friends say it all the time, so I'm like, fine, go, go to town, enjoy, get it, get all the things, so, that's it, holy doodle, encourage you to use it, it's really fun, holy doodle, that's so good, that's so good, not as good as the F-bomb, but thank you, I like these questions, hello, hi, um, so last year my family um, had a supernatural Halloween, and I dressed up as you, and we handed out little tiny apple pies. So my question to you as Brianna, yeah, Brianna. That's me. It's Brianna, you're right, yeah. What do you hand out for Halloween? I, I do not hand out things because I don't, I'm a taker. <laughs> I don't like to give things. No, we have not, we have not been home for Halloween in the, in the last couple years because we take Valentina trick-or-treating. But if you were to ask me what my favorite candy is, because y'all want to bring it to me tomorrow. No, don't. The last time this happened, I got Kit Kats out of my fucking asshole for three years. And I don't look at Kit Kats anymore. I'm not serious. I love Kit Kat. Um, but we did this thing during COVID. I don't know if a lot of people did it where you gave out candy down a chute. Mm -hmm. Did you guys yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah that was really fun. People are probably still going to keep doing it because it's so convenient. You just sit upstairs and watch a movie. You hear trick or treating. You don't have to go downstairs to the door. Um, but I, I like to be the house that gives out the full candy bars. Mm -hmm. You say that like you all still go trick or treating. I don't judge you. I do not judge you. Big fan. What do you dress up as? Well, Valentina's being boring this year, so she's going to dress up as a cat. Ugh. I know. Last time we dressed up, she was dressed as a tiger, and 
Jose dressed up as Joe Exotic. No. <laughs> and I dressed up as Carol Baskin. Do you know who those people are? <laughs> Not wrong. Tiger King. No, yeah, but Carol Baskin's American. Yes, that's right. That's right. Were you listening to the story? What? Were you, yeah. <laughs> Michael Borat. I don't, I don't have.